Hey everybody, in today's lecture, we are going to talk about dynamic time warping. Dynamic time warping is a distance measure between two series. Let us understand what dynamic time warping means, what is the intuitive understanding behind dynamic time warping, and how dynamic time warping works algorithmically. So, going forward with it, let us understand the measurement techniques that we use in a day to day life to compare series. Right. One of the foremost techniques that we use is Euclidean distance. However, in series, especially time series, we see that the series could be shifted by a time t, but the series could be very much similar. As we can see from the figure, for the two series, series A on the top and series B and the bottom, if we compare the Euclidean distance, the distance would come out to be very high. But from our intuitive sense and from our visualization, we can understand that series A is similar to series B and its distance should be much less. How can we understand this distance based on the shift? Okay, So dynamic time warping comes into the picture and helps us measure distance irrespective of the time shift. So it is an algorithm for measuring similarity between two temporal sequences which may vary in speed. Next is what is the intuitive understanding between DTW? We now know the definition of DTW that it is an algorithm measuring two time series. But what is the intuition behind DTW? So DTW in a very generic sense would mean that the minimum cost of converting series A to series B. And this conversion would take place utilizing three primary operations. Insertion, deletion, match. There are certain guidelines or principles relating to these three operations. What these three, what are the guidelines associated? We can insert or remove a duplicate of an entry in an adjacent space. This has zero cost. For example, going from 0, 1, 1, minus 2, 0 to 0, 1, 1, minus 2, minus 2, 0. We are inserting a duplicate. Now, this would give a, have a cost of zero. We can edit an entry. If you edit A to B, the cost is the distance between A and B. So if we measure the distance between A and B as A minus B modulus or the absolute value of A minus B, then the cost of going from 1 to 5 would be 4. We can insert or delete a 0 at the end of the series. This has 0 cost. If we insert a 0 at the end of the series or delete a 0 from the end of the series, we would not add to any cost. So let us understand it in more detail. We had a series A, we have series B. The series could be denoted pictorially as this. Now we are converting 0, 1, 1, minus 2, 0. We are inserting one 0 at the adjacent place of the first position. So it would be 0, 0, 1, 1, minus 2, 0. Since we know that inserting a duplicate or deleting a duplicate at an adjacent position it has zero cost. So the cost here would be zero. Next, we are eliminating the duplicate one. Again, eliminating a duplicate from the adjacent position has a cost of zero. Now we are converting minus two to minus one. This is a shift from minus two to minus one. The difference would be one. So the cost would be one. Finally, we are eliminating zero at the end. So again, this has zero cost. So the total cost would be one and we would have converted our series A to series B. If we go by the matching pictorially, this would look something like this, where the zero index of the series A would match with zero index and the first index. So how these notations are formed is something di different, but just understand the notion that if we are inserting zero, if we are adding more zeros, like having one to many relationship, that is an insertion. If we have many to one relationship, that is a deletion. If we have one to one relationship, that is a match. Some of the applications of DTW. So DTW has varied applications, primarily involving time series data. So it could be used in signature matching, spoken word recognition, gate analysis. Gate analysis is nothing but the analysis of the movement of an individual. So we could compare the movement of an individual, track the movement of an individual against a reference movement. However, the speed of every individual is different while walking. The posture of every individual is different while walking. So how are we going to have a one-to-one -one mapping using Euclidean distance? That is very difficult. 
we would not have a generic notion. So DTW comes into the picture and helps us have a time invariant matching. Hey, welcome back. Sorry about the small hiccup there. So let us discuss about the algorithmic approach using dynamic programming for DTW. So DTW, the name itself comprises dynamic for dynamic programming time because it is used to apply to time series warping because we are distorting or warping the series that we are applying the DTW algorithm to. Okay, so DTW algorithm is based on the mathematical computation as DTW of IJ is equal to the distance between points XI and YJ and the minimum of the value to the left diagonal below DTW I minus 1 J minus 1 the value 1 row below okay DTW I minus 1 J and the value DTW I J minus 1 one column left so if you look at this image when we are at index 1 1 this would look at the values DTW 0 0 DTW 1 0 and DTW 0 1 okay among these the minimum would be selected and added to the distance between xi yj so how these values are filled now if you under see from the image here 1 1 the value for 1 1 would come from xi y, xi and yj we since we are considering the distance here as the modulus of xi yj xi minus yj right absolute difference so it would be 0 because the values are 0 0 and the minimum in this region is 0 Going to the next next element, that is 1, 2. Again, we see that the value is 0, 0. So, D, X, I, Y, J would be 0. And the minimum in this region is 0. But where is this value coming from? Coming from the left. Where was the previous value coming from? Coming from the lower diagonal. Okay, so we mark those as arrows and continue forward. One thing to understand here is the three operations that we talked about, match, insertion, and deletion, are represented in dynamic programming approach of DTW as DTW of I minus 1, J minus 1 denotes match, I minus 1, J denotes insertion, and I, J minus 1 denotes deletion. Okay. So using this approach and building the cost matrix, I would advise you to fill this matrix yourself, pause the video here, and then move on to the next slide, which has the solution. Let us look at the solution. So this is the entire field matrix, field cost matrix. Now from these cost matrix, we would also have the directions based on which the, from where the values are coming. And this direction is nothing but the direction pointing towards the minimum value in the region, the surrounding region. And the final DTW distance would be given by the, by the index DTW n comma m. n denotes the length of series a, m denotes the length of series b. So here our final DTW distance is 0.5 and the path would be going from 1, 1, moving to 1, 2, moving to 1, 3, then 2, 4, then 3, 5, 4, 6, 6, 5, 7 and 6, 7. Okay, so this is the path. If you got it correct, congratulations. If not, go back, again understand and try to solve it once more. Let us see how... Python implements DTW algorithm. It is very simple to use DTW in Python using just a simple library known as DTW Python. Okay. Let us see the documentation. I hope the screen is visible here. So if we go forward and see DTW Python, the library has the documentation listed. You can install it using pip. Okay. You can get the information using the following commands. And it's as simple as in importing the library DTW and using DTW, passing the query. Query is nothing but series A, template is series B. Keep internals just keeps the actual series, series values in one of its variables. We would also see what are the associated functions. Let us go to the next chart and see the, diff the various functions that we have. Okay, there is a small implementation. So here I have taken two series, series A, which is not nothing but a linear space defined between the intervals 0 and 2.5. And we are taking a total of 100 points in that linear space. We are taking a sign on top of it and adding some random noise 
to it okay so the curve would look something like the blue line the next is the b series b which we are taking as the cause of the above above series okay which appears as orange line using these two series we are writing just a custom function where we are displaying the plots okay and dtw algorithm itself can be itself works simply by calling the dtw method of the dtw library and passing the query reference and internals you can keep it as true or false that's that's a choice that you can make the distance the dtw distance would be returned by calling dot distance attribute and the normalized distance normalized distance is nothing but you sum over all the distance or the costs along the path and then you divide by the total number of points in the path so okay so from this you can see for these two series a and b right so our warped path would be our, or our warped series would be something denoting as the blue line and the orange line right if we look at this three way plot three way plot helps us identify which indices are used okay so which indices are used to match with which indices of the reference and query correspondingly so here we see we have a very flat line and we, along the x axis and also a very flat line or very absolute vertical line along the y axis as well which can also be seen through the two way plot where if you have a very flat line you'll see there's a lot of one to many correspondence right similarly when you have a vertical line that is a lot of many to one correspondence however in real life we would ideally want our dtw mapping to be restricted to a certain local constraint we would not want the mapping to take to match the very first index all the way up to the last index of the other series that would not give us a clear picture we would see later how that is and what are the challenges associated and how do we fix those challenges but just understand that if you have a very ideally if this is a diagonal if this is a diagonal line then you are good the dtw matching is absolutely fine if you match a series with this with its same series shifted you will have a diagonal line here okay we have another example where we are taking another series and that series and then we are trying to plot this fit is a much better fit here because the line, the curve is along the diagonal slightly distorted but still along the diagonal and here we see there are not many many to one one to one relationships it's a continuation non linear elastic mapping okay. hope this makes sense let us now move to the next slide where we see wait so based on our previous understanding we under, we know that if left unconstrained the dtw matching could start at the very first point of the first series and could match all the way up to the last point of the second series so that would be a very diverge one to many mapping we ideally do not want such a mapping to happen we would want to constrain our mapping or our time shift to local con local locally okay right so how are we going to constrain it and how are we going to make the time invariance apply to a local local area or local neighborhood alone so we have two ways of doing it one of the ways is known as sakochiba where we have a fixed window the other is known as itakura where we are restricting the slope of inclination so in sakochiba or the fixed window as you see on the image a right this a you see the width along the diagonal is constant here you see along the left that depends on the matrix that you are choosing or how you are creating your notion around the matrix this could be a left diagonal right diagonal depending on how you are building your dynamic cost matrix okay so whatever your values or the dtw matching that comes if this should lie within this interval within this boundary region okay for the itakura it should lie within this parallelogram okay so itakura is more is varying based on the time itself whereas sakochiba is a constant hope this makes sense we'll not go into the details of it for this video we'll cover that as part of the separate video but just understand the challenges and the notion why that is a problem if you see we started on our lecture by comparing euclidean and dtw for measuring time series now if you, if you see from this image here if left unconstrained 
this the euclidean distance though would keep on rising but a dtw distance remains zero even though we shift this time series by say two times the time period or three times the time period or 100 times the time period okay ideally again we do not want that we would want the time series or the distance to increase after a certain boundary or a certain window so that is why we apply those constraints hope you enjoyed the lecture and had something valuable to learn see you in the next lecture don't forget to subscribe like and let me know in the comments what are your thoughts how would you like the video to be improved further and make it more meaningful see you bye bye